Hello, welcome to Create Full Art. Today I would love to show you some really cool tools that you can use with your acrylics to expand your options as an artist. Now this is just a short video, so there's obviously a lot of tools and I can't show all of them to you, but I'm going to show you some snippets from my weekly art lessons to introduce you to some really fun tools. And then if you wanna learn more, you can sign up for my weekly art lessons and learn more about them and learn about all of the tools that you can use with your acrylics. So let's get started learning about some of these really cool tools that you can use. One of my favorite tools to use with acrylic paints that you may have not used before are paint pens and markers. So let me teach you a little bit about them. If you love precise lines and shapes in your artwork, this is what you need. Acrylic paint pens are different than normal pens and markers because usually those have oils in them or they have alcohol. So it makes them incompatible with acrylics. So paint pens come in a variety of colors, sheens, and opacities. So you do have a lot of colors to choose from, even more than this package right here. You can get packages of a hundred different colors and so forth. So paint pens come with a variety of nibs. This one is the extra fine tip. There's obviously fine tip. You can also get calligraphy ends. You can do writing with it like calligraphy. There's also really thick ends. I don't have any of those, but they're really great for big thick lines. As far as surfaces to paint on, you can paint on anything that you can paint with acrylic paints on. So let's talk about how to use these. They are different than just using a regular pen and you'll notice that. So here when you open up the pen, it's ready to go. But when you open up an acrylic paint pen, it's not. So usually if you haven't used it before, this will be white. And what you need to do is shake your pen first. Shake it like this. Okay, so you wanna shake it up enough that you don't see any separation of colors. And then what you wanna do is you want to start pumping. So see how I'm pushing down? And you don't wanna do it hard cause you'll ruin the tip. So you wanna be gentle with it. And then it'll start flowing. You don't wanna pump it too much cause then you'll end up having a spill. So, so see how that one too much and it just kind of came out blobby so that's why I always want to start on my paper towel before I start marking and then I can start making my precise lines I love to sketch with paint pens because I can just go over the lines with paint to make my sketch marks disappear and sometimes I just need that precision that the markers give especially for buildings and faces and fine details if this seems like a cool tool that you want to try using, there are so much more to learn about paint pens in my weekly art lessons. You can click up there at the right hand corner or go to patreon.com slash art to learn more. And then you can practice along with me. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is the palette knife. It is the second most popular tool next to brushes. So that's why we're going to talk about these today. So when you're looking for a good palette knife, what you want to do is check to see if the metal is made with a type that will not rust. Obviously this is going to have a lot of paint on it. The next thing is you want it to be bendable right here, right in this area, not right in here and not at the tip. Look at these palette knives. These are the ones that I have. There are so many more that you can get that have all different kinds of shaped ends. This right here, is called a straight palette knife because you see there's no dip right here while this one is called a cranked shank <laughs> palette knife okay so there's two different kinds that you can get right here and there's also different ends you can get like pointed rounded you can get ends that are completely flat some that have grooves in them really cool also the sides can be straight like this or they can also have grooves in them so that when you're dragging your paint across it gives you the design that's in here there's also different uses so a lot of artists they take their colors and they mix them with their palette knife i like to have the crank shank one because see how if i had this one i could get 
some paint right here and drag it in, but you can use whatever one feels good to you. And see, you can mix your paint on your palette with your palette knife. So it's really important to understand that palette knives are used to create texture in your artwork. And we're gonna go over some of the ways that you can create texture. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to create texture by using the edge of your palette knife. Okay, so I grabbed my color. I'm just scraping the edge of this with my color here and I can create a line. Now, if I take my palette knife and I go more diagonally, I can create a thicker line. So see how it skips? So the more I have on my palette knife, the less it skips, but I'm only gonna be able to get so much on my palette knife. So you have to understand that palette knives will skip and give you texture. It will show the texture underneath. That's just how they are. So with your palette knife, you can also push up and create texture. See how this could be good for grasses. You can also take it by the side and go like this. Now, if I take a bunch of paint, I can create texture within that paint by dragging and creating lines. So when you're creating shapes with your palette knife, the end is really important and the sides are as well. So if I wanted to create a square shape, I would look for a palette knife that has a square end. So I can use the end to get a shape like this in there. I can also use the end to drag in shapes like this. And I can just pull this up if I wanted to and create this kind of texture. I could scrape all of this and just see the underneath. Isn't that cool? So many things you can do with a palette knife. <laughs> do you like my song? All you need to do is to practice your palette knife painting to get better and better at it so you have more control because it's all about learning to control your palette knife so that you can get the different looks that you want. So if you love the look of a palette knife, there are so many more techniques that you can learn along with me and practice with me. And you can use some of my free tutorials to practice along. So I'll put some links up there in the right hand corner and in the description. All right, so the next tool that we're gonna learn about is the sponge. And I use my sponges for a lot of different things and you can even use them to paint with. There are two main types of sponges. There are synthetic and natural sponges. The different types of sponges are gonna give you different textures. These are synthetic ones. You can get really smooth ones like makeup sponges and you can get more coarse ones like this. So see how that works. So the less textured usually the easier it is to blend and you can blend going in a circular motion. And then you can take your sponge and go in a circular motion and create clouds, soft clouds. And see if you leave it wet like that, it'll blend just a little bit with the color behind it and skip areas like that so that you can have dimension. And of course this gives you a different look than a paintbrush because it's a different tool. They're also great at creating a textured background. So I could come in here and just dab for my background and create this soft texture. You can come paint a tree if you'd like with me. Have fun getting messy. Grab yourself a sponge if you don't have one in your art supplies. That tree tutorial on the left, we use acrylic pens, palette knives, and sponges to create so you can practice along. There are so many more fun tools that you can use with acrylic paints and they expand your options as an artist so you can get more creative and create the art that you want. And that's what I try to do in those art lessons is teach you how to use those tools 
so that you can do that. And also, if you are loving my tutorials on YouTube, when you sign up for my weekly art lessons, you're actually helping to support this channel so that I can keep creating those tutorials for you. So thank you so much for signing up if you do that. And you can also watch more videos and I'll see you in my next video.